Hey everyone, welcome back to DIY Biotech. Today I'm going to be showing you a brewing method and the science behind an ancient Viking protein beer called Blonde. There isn't much information out there on this beverage or its origins, but there are a few recipes. However, today I'm going to be showing you a method that uses a yeast that breaks down the lactose in milk and turns it into alcohol. But before diving too deep into the science and the brewing method behind this, let's just give it a taste. So what I have right here is the primary fermentation or the first fermentation. This is basically just the first fermentation that this brew has undergone. However, on contrast, this is the secondary fermentation or the second fermentation, whatever you want to call it. This is basically the first ferment that has been fermented again in a bottle with a little bit of added sugar. So I'm going to taste this lighter drink, the primary fermentation first. There's a, there's a tiny bit of carbonation. It's really not that strongly flavored. It has a little bit of like a, like a, a very light, like Mountain Dew or Sprite, but very light. It smells a, a tiny bit salty and savory. It's, it's very mild. It's not offensive at all. There's no yeasty smell. There's no alcoholic smell. It doesn't smell sour or anything like that. Yeah, it, it really tastes close to sort of like a flat soda almost. I really wish uh, I'd let this go a little bit longer. It would have been nice with a little bit more carbonation, but how it is now is really nice. It, it's mildly sweet. It's nothing that you you drink it and you say, oh, I can only have a couple of sips of this. This is, it's, it's, it's mild, non-offensive. Uh, there's no strong smells or strong off flavors. It's, it's, it's pleasant. So let's try this secondary ferment. It's a little bit darker. Uh, of course, it's from a different brew from the primary ferment. Uh, so it, it did go through slightly different conditions, which may have affected the outcome. It smells a little uh, saltier, a little bit more savory. This one is much sweeter. So this tastes pretty similar to the primary fermentation. It's definitely more sweet, definitely a little bit more savory, but it also is a little bit less sour, a little bit less towards the soda end of the spectrum, I would say. Uh, both of these, I think, could go a little bit longer, have some more carbonation. I have experienced sufficient carbonation in brewing this before, so I know it's possible. Uh, these are just a little bit flat, but you know, there's always room for improvement. So this drink is interesting, not only because of its pretty unique taste, but also because of its nutritional content. So this is a product made from whey, which is a milk product, and milk products are pretty high in protein. This contains about 30 to 50 grams per liter of protein. So one full glass of this probably has about 10 to 20 grams of protein. That's almost as good as some protein shakes, which is, is really interesting. Uh, it has a little bit of sugar in it. What I found is about 10 to 20 grams per liter as well of sugar in this. I was surprised to find that this fermentation actually yielded about 2% alcohol, which I didn't expect because I didn't think there was any alcoholic fermentation pathways in this yeast, but apparently there is. 2% alcohol isn't crazy, it isn't going to make you go do crazy things, but it's, it's there and could definitely be increased with different brew methods. So I find that to be really interesting. The last sort of nutritional tidbit that I think is interesting is lactose. So lactose is a dairy sugar. The majority of the population is lactose intolerant, including myself, but I feel comfortable drinking this. And the reason is that there's an organism called Cluveromyces lactis that I use to brew this drink. Cluveromyces lactis was isolated from the cheese making industry and has been shown to produce very large amounts of an enzyme called lactase, which actually breaks down the lactose sugar. This organism produces so much lactase, in fact, that it's actually used in a lot of those lactase pills that you can buy over the counter. 
This organism is decently well studied in the scientific field and it's also decently well studied in the food science -y field. I found a really good paper reviewing the safety of this organism if you're concerned about that. I did buy this organism from a cheese making website so it was intended to be slathered on cheese so I would hope it was safe. Additionally in the paper they said that the FDA deemed this organism as generally recognized as safe or gross. So if the FDA says it's safe, then I'm gonna brew some crazy drink out of it and drink it and not be too concerned. So after a preliminary fermentation, just to see what would happen when I added this to milk, I did a proper study where I actually measured the glucose concentration and the alcohol concentration in the brew every day about over a course of about six days. The data that I generated is really useful and about what I expected, which is really cool. So here's the graph that I made. I'm really proud of it. And it may not make much sense to you at first, but let's break it down by the, the two main things that are in the graph. So what you see are the glucose levels and you see the alcohol levels and you say, okay, I thought this guy was talking about lactose. Now he's talking about glucose. I don't know what any of this means. Well, first what's going on is, like I said, the Cluveromyces lactis is producing the lactase enzyme. And it produces the lactase enzyme in order to break down lactose. Now lactose is a disaccharide, meaning two unit sugar. So it has two sugar units that your body can't break down if you're lactose intolerant. But apparently these tiny fungi have figured out a way to do it. So this lactase enzyme that K-lactase is excreting is breaking down the disaccharide sugar lactose into two monosaccharide sugars, glucose and galactose. Glucose you're probably familiar with, it's a sugar. Galactose is a very similar sugar that you maybe have not heard of. But both of these sugars can be broken down by your body as well as these yeasts tiny, tiny bodies. And then finally, this glucose and galactose can be used by the cell for energy or to produce other products like alcohol. So you now have this long chain of steps going on and it sort of is all coming together now and the graph is starting to make sense. So at the very beginning, you have no glucose in milk. It's only lactose. So you inoculate your milk or whey in this case, whatever that contains only lactose. The organisms take a minute to warm up. Eventually they start producing the lactase enzyme. That lactase enzyme eventually starts working and you have this huge spike in glucose concentration. Then most of your lactose has broken down into glucose so you can see the graph taper off on the glucose curve. And then as this glucose becomes more and more available, the organism can make more and more byproduct in this case, the byproduct that we're interested in is sweet, sweet alcohol. And you can see that the alcohol levels increase sort of exponentially and then level off at a certain point. The leveling off is either due to not enough sugar to be broken down into alcohol or just because the organisms can't tolerate that high of an alcohol content level. The brew process for this blonde is really, really similar to cheese making. At least the beginning steps are. A few of the things that you'll need to brew this blonde is, of course, a brew vessel. You're also going to need probably a funnel and maybe a strainer, preferably with cheesecloth. And of course, you're going to need milk. The first thing that you're going to want to do is heat your milk in a pan. Don't heat it too fast. I was impatient and I made two mistakes. I burnt the bottom of the pan and I also overboiled the milk. I didn't capture myself overboiling the milk on camera, but it's not pretty. It gets everywhere. But anyway, you want to heat your milk, pasteurize it for about 10 minutes, a very gentle simmer, heat it very slowly, not like I did. Then you're going to want to take your milk off the heat and you want to curdle it. Now, to curdle your milk, you can add any kind of acid you want, anything you can dream of. I even used balsamic vinegar once and it worked. So in this case, I had lime juice. It's sort of the more popular method, lemon or lime juice to curdle your milk. 
And the method that I use, which I think works pretty well, is to add about half a tablespoon to your milk at a time. Stir very slowly so that you don't make really tiny curds, which ends up being very difficult to strain. Wait about 30 seconds to a minute before adding another half a tablespoon of your acid. Stir very slowly. Wait again, add some more. I ended up adding about two tablespoons of acid before my milk was sufficiently curdled. Next, you want to isolate your whey, and the easiest way to do that is just to strain it. I used this fine mesh strainer, but I think cheesecloth would have been better. I just didn't have any on hand. It would have caught more of the, the curd particles. Uh, whatever way you find to strain it, that works for you. Whatever boats your float, just go with that. You just want to isolate your whey. And you can put your whey directly into your sterilized brew vessel. I've been only filling my brew vessels up about halfway. I'm sure changing this would potentially change the brewing characteristics. Then, in order to not completely kill your yeast immediately, you want to let your brew vessel cool down to about body temperature, which is about 37 degrees C. And once your brew vessel has cooled down, significantly enough you can add your yeast in again i'm using cluveramyces lactis i bought this from a cheese making website if you have trouble getting it contact me i'll try to help as best i can and then what i did is i threw it in my freezer incubator which i made in another video if you want to see that if you're if you're interested in that uh, it's basically just a, a little box that is kept at 33 degrees celsius i kept the brew in there for about four days at two days i made sure to check on it and crack it open to make sure it wasn't going to explode or anything like that and then finally on the fourth day i threw it in the fridge for a few hours to let it cool down for the secondary fermentation the actual fermentation process was very very similar uh, in order to prepare the bottle all i did was add about 16 grams of regular table sugar to a 12.4 fluid ounce bottle i don't know why it was that size. It's a swing top bottle though, so I topped it off with the primary fermentation, closed the swing top lid, again threw it in the same fermentation conditions after two days. I burped it on the fourth day, I threw it in the fridge. I really don't think that the table sugar fermented very much in the secondary ferment. Maybe the yeasts that weren't used to that sugar or can't break down sucrose for whatever reason. So anyway, I just thought this was a really cool project. I thought it was really cool that this non-conventional yeast can be used to brew different kinds of beer slash health drinks. I don't really know what this is. There are a million different things you could do to improve this brew. A few of the things I've been thinking of is you could concentrate your whey. So if you had an entire gallon of whey or two gallons of whey or something like that and reduced it down to you know a quarter of a gallon, you'd have much higher protein content, much higher lactose content, which would mean more glucose, which would mean potentially more alcohol. That would be pretty cool. There's also potential for aging this product. So I would assume that if you let this sit in a bottle for a very long time, it will taste different than it does right now in the secondary ferment instead of just adding table sugar which admittedly is kind of boring you could add some sort of fruit juices or you could add uh, more flavorings or or whatever your heart desires and the last sort of idea that i had is that you could have a consortium of organisms you know you could have the cluveramyces lactis break down the lactose into glucose and then you could have the conventional Brewer's yeast, Saccharomyces cerevisiae, breaking down the glucose into alcohol, which it's really good at. We've bred it for centuries to, to be good at making alcohol. What's interesting about the consortium method is that it's probably what the Vikings used. If this actually is an ancient Viking drink, that's probably what they used. They didn't have microbial techniques back then, so they just had, you know, a culture that they would inoculate a new brew with, and then from that new brew, they would save a little bit of it and inoculate the next brew with it. So it would probably be a consortium of different organisms that happen to do what they wanted. So anyway, I really hope you try this out. I really wanna see what, what people can do with it, uh, with this technique and with this organism knowing what it does. So please, definitely if you try out this project, please let me know 
how it went in the comments below. If you have any ideas for this project or other future projects for this channel, please leave them in the comments below. Uh, I hope you liked the video. If you did, please leave a like. Uh, and if you want to see more content like this, make sure to subscribe to the channel. So anyway, thank you for watching. Cheers.